<sighs> Sorry, I just I I just ate a lot of Jimmy John's. <laughs> I ate mine and Kim's and I'm feeling super bloated. I didn't expect to be making another video about a handheld console this soon. I Okay. It, I <laughs> There it is. I wanted to unbox this because of one comment I had on my Steam Deck video, but I wanted to clarify when I opened the Steam Deck and I said, I can't believe it just came in this box with the power cord on the outside and it didn't come in a box box. Somebody commented, did you want them to write Steam Deck on the on the box so the mailman knew what it was and would steal it? That's legit a comment I saw. No, I wanted it to come in a box, but then inside I wanted, it's not even that I wanted, but I feel I figured it would come in a box because products usually arrive in a box. <laughs> I don't know why I took the time to go on that rant for one person, but whatever. All right, so we have the Odin. By the way, very confusing name because we had the Aeon Neo. Now we have the Aeon Odin and they're not related in any way. I was live on Twitch when this thing, I guess, dropped and everyone in the chat and also Bob were like, are you going to buy this? It's just released. And I looked at it and I was like, this thing, it looks sick. I thought it would be like a Steam Deck or a and &E situation. Turns out after the fact, it's more targeted towards emulation of older consoles. So at first when I realized that, I was like, oh, I don't know if I really want that then. I mean, I'm not super big at emulation or playing retro stuff. I mean, I have all the old retro games, but then I actually had an idea and you've probably seen it in the title and the thumbnail. So let's just open it because I'm really excited to do this now. Bob got his weeks, months ago, actually. And that's because he ordered a basic one. I ordered the atomic purple one. And I guess that just took him a while to get the shell together. Wow, very nice packaging. Oh yeah, and I got the pro model. I forgot what I bought. It's been so long. Whoa! I didn't expect it to be so small! Oh, that's so cute. We got really nice clicky buttons on the D-pad and the X, Y, A, and B. They've gone for a really flush look, which I don't mind, but when the toggles are like indented and almost flush with the console, it kind of feels like I'm thumbing the whole console. I kind of like how the switch is raised up, but there's also back buttons on here, which I didn't expect. So yeah, a very cute little handheld. I want to quickly look Look at the Indiegogo page to see what I bought. <laughs> okay, so I bought the Odin Pro Super Pack for $400, which came with the Odin Pro, 128 gigabytes, charging cable, super dock, HDMI cable, screen protector, hard shell, bag, earbuds, charger. Oh yeah, it has LED lights around the toggles, passive and active cooling, HDMI out, obviously. Game streaming was something else they enforced. There's a picture here that has like Red Dead, Cyberpunk, Gears 5. So it has a 1080p LCD screen. All right, you know what? Very cool stats on this little thing. Let's get it plugged in. Oh, that's a nice little animation they got there. All right, welcome to Aya Odin. Let's get started. Oh, 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 yeah. I don't know what the AOSP launcher is, but it looks more like a desktop. So I'm going to select the Odin launcher for now. Oh, you can change the wallpaper. Of course you can. So now I should be able to search for applications. Okay, I have no idea how to do anything with this from here. Maybe I will literally ask Bob. Hello? Hey, friend. I just uh, turned on my A in Odin. How do I start downloading apps and stuff? Do you see the left side menu? Uh, yeah. On the bottom, it should say like system apps or something. Oh. Do you see the play store? Mm. Oh, oh, yeah. The left menu that slides out was over the top of it. Oh, uh, yeah. Click that and then download whatever you want. And that's all on Google Play? Uh, yeah. Oh. I, just, I was taking a shit. You call me taking shit. That's fine. If you want suggestions on the emulators to get, uh, watch my video. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you, my fellow co-host of the Nintendo podcast, oh, which is the number one podcast so on Apple podcast. And you can listen to it and watch it right here on YouTube. I appreciate you too. Okay, bye. Sounds like every emulator is on the Google Play Store, which I can instantly access here on the A Odin. So that couldn't be more simple. The last thing we really have to look at is uh, the dock. I mean, it's kind of neat. I'm wondering why they chose like a glass protective sleeve over the top here. Surely the screen doesn't stay on for you to look at, right? Or no. Well, 
Maybe it does. This is kind of cool. And once I get it loaded up with all my Nintendo emulators, it's going to be a perfect addition alongside my Switch and my Steam Deck. Oh, I'm set, baby. If anyone ever said I didn't like handheld gaming, this should be the proof that I do. Give me some time. This is going to take the whole night, I'm guessing. I'm fortunate to have lived my life oh. at the intersection. Oh, sorry. Hi. I was just listening to Reggie's new book on Audible. And you can too if you visit audible.com slash beat-em-ups or text beat-em-ups to 500-500. Audible allows you to enjoy all of your audio entertainment in one app. You'll always find the best of what you love or even something new to discover. There is an incredible selection of audiobooks across every genre from bestsellers and new releases to celebrity memoirs, mystery and thrillers and more. Like I said, Reggie's book, Disrupting the Game, is on Audible, narrated by Reggie himself. Who doesn't want to listen to Reggie talk in their ear for hours on end? <laughs> and of course, podcasts, from popular favorites to even exclusives on Audible. And mine! Yeah! <laughs> the Nintendo podcast is on Audible for you to listen to. You could double support me right now. You could visit audible.com forward slash beat-em-ups or text beat-em-ups to 500-500 and check out Audible and support my podcast on Audible. It's a win-win for me <laughs> and maybe for you and probably for you. As an Audible member, you can choose one title a month to keep from the entire catalog. With the full access, you can also download or stream the titles anytime you want because the Audible app makes it easy to listen anytime, anywhere. Best part is new members can try Audible for free for 30 days. I lied. I was listening to my so, own podcast. I'm conceited. Uh, thank you, Audible, for sponsoring the video. Okay, it has been a up and down last 24 hours. I've gone on quite a journey with it. I don't really even know where to begin. There's definitely some bad, but there's a lot of good too. But before we get to anything, I, I, I did it. I turned this thing into a completely portable virtual Nintendo console machine. It wasn't as easy as I would have hoped, but let me show you. There we go, baby! Just like that. And yes, it actually all works. So if we go to the NES and load it up, it'll take us to all my games. Obviously, if we pick one, Zelda, hit play, and you're playing Zelda. So now here is where we start running into several issues. <laughs> if you know your way around apps like Dolphin and Retroarch or whatever it is you use to emulate, you probably know what to expect from here. You can expect a lot of controls not being mapped right away and you having to go into the settings of each emulator and map the controls manually. While you might get good at that or you might know your way around that, there's always hiccups. Well, I mean, I don't know where you even want to begin with the hiccups, but this right here is the Odin main menu and I can't do anything with it. I can change the wallpaper. This was my backup plan of just kind of making it look like a Switch home screen, but I can't actually change any of these icons. So I had to download a launcher and I chose the Dig Launcher because I found that somebody had created a Nintendo Switch theme for the launcher. Now, the launcher isn't what's emulating the games. The launcher finds the games on the console, then you tell it what app to use to emulate the games. It's not too bad because if you don't have the program to launch it, it will direct you to Google Play Store to download whatever it is that you need. So as much as some things are complicated, other things are really easy. For for example, getting games on here, super easy. Okay, really quickly, I look like crap, doesn't matter. I'm not gonna tell you where to download a ROM because I'll get in trouble, but I just downloaded Thousand Year Door on my PC. It is not on the Odin yet. The Odin is plugged into my PC just like it would be any kind of storage device. I am dragging Thousand Year Door over to the folder where I keep the ROMs on the Odin. It copied to it, it's already here. Literally, I just did it. It took two seconds and I'm already emulating and playing Thousand Year Door. The only thing that's frustrating is again, you have to map the control. So you have to come up here in the settings, you have to do the GameCube input, and then you have to one by one map everything to the first controller port and it'll save it and then you can play everything portably. But then we get 
this guy. Bob told me that the screen stays on when you're playing docked, which is obviously why they went with last year. But I guess they updated it, which is great because it draws power leaving the screen on, which you don't want. So it looks like they've added an update where the screen turns off now and it just completely throws to the console. It still vibrates. This whole unit on the TV cabinet was going crazy while I was playing Smash. And I obviously plugged in the GameCube controller to try emulating Smash in GameCube games. When you plug it in, it recognizes you've plugged a GameCube controller into the GameCube port, but it won't automatically know what to do with it. Again, you have to go in a dolphin and you have to map everything, which is made even worse by the fact that it's going by the first port. So if you've mapped the first port, port on here, GameCube controller one is mapped to these, it'll still use these even when it's docked. You have to go back in the GameCube controller one and then you have to map everything all over again while you're on the TV. Then you can play like normal, which means whenever you're done and you want that nice pulling it out of the dock and now you're playing portably, which it very almost does, the controls are unmapped. I tried mapping the controls to the other controller ports, but it just wouldn't work unless I mapped it to GameCube controller one. I guess I guess I'll just leave it there with getting the games on here and playing is actually pretty easy despite working around emulators that crash constantly and have their own bugs. Unless you want to ride just portably and not worry about the dock and set everything up once, then you should be fine. But I had a lot of other issues with this thing too. I put Game Pass on here. I was streaming Halo Infinite and it worked. It's all cloud streaming, but honestly, it was really receptive. Xbox's X Cloud service is really solid, honestly, but plugging it into the dock, it was interesting playing Halo Infinite with a GameCube controller, but the C stick was moving very slowly and like lightly. I tried just plugging in the 360 controller and it picked it up right away. It knew what I was trying to use. All the controls were technically working, but every time I would try and move and look around, the camera would just pivot right down to my feet and I couldn't bring it back no matter what I tried to do. I tried unplugging and replugging, restarting the console, restarting the game. Also, this does have 4K upscaling and a game like Wind Waker, a couple of graphical glitches aside, I thought it was playing and looking really great, but blowing this up, for some reason it just looked horrible, horrible. Uh, it was like still trying to stream it to this small screen, but to the whole TV, it did not look good. But on here right now, I mean, this looks pretty sick. And again, no issues, super responsive. But again, your phones can do that, but you have these controls, which I didn't have to map. These actually just started working. I'm not gonna ask how or why, I'm just gonna be very thankful. Some other interesting experiences I had, Genshin Impact does not support a controller for the Android phone. So what I had to do was a cheeky workaround where when you load up a game like Genshin Impact, you can touch map all over the screen and map it to the controls. So essentially what it would do is simulate you were pressing the screen when you're pressing a button. Pretty cool and also kind of cheating. In Genshin Impact, I mean, there's no problem with it. You're playing solo mode and honestly it works works fantastic. Really, this is the only way to play Genshin in a nice way portably. The reason why it's cheating is because in Apex Legends, it's a mobile version. It's only mobile players. And I had a couple of games with all these poor players suffering through trying to play a game with multiple abilities and reloading and aiming and shooting and moving and looking around. And they're trying to all do it by touching their screen. Like you literally watch other players suffer to try and even stand and still and aim at the same time while I'm just beast moding everything. But not everything is great. Eternal the card game. Yeah, I know, I know. Talked about it in my Switch video, my Steam Deck video, and now here we are again. That doesn't support onboard controls, it seems like either. It did say that it did, but I cannot get it to work. And that's not a game that you can just touch map things to because you have like a whole hand of cards down the bottom of the screen. And sometimes you might want the left one. Sometimes you might want the right one. I mean, it's not really an issue because you can use touch screen, but then you could also just play on your phone. But I do think it's cool that because it's essentially just an Android phone or tablet, you can go on the Play Store and download literally any mobile game to play. So you got mobile games, you got emulators, and you've got streaming. There is a lot you can do with this thing and it does all of it pretty well. And it's a really nice build. And it does come with a dock if you're willing to mess around with that. I am really proud of this fake virtual console that I've built. And for the most part, it does work. I made all of these icons myself, by the way.
in Photoshop. <coughs> I was also proud of that. A big disappointment though, this thing, when I bought it, it was supposed to have lights. Not a selling factor, but it was a part of the draw for sure. And I got mine, and if you slide this menu out to the left, you've got handle light and joystick light. I tried turning these buttons on and off to get the lights to work. They would never turn on. So I told Bob, I, I think mine is broken, and he looked it up and uh, laughed at me, because apparently the Atomic Purple version doesn't come with lights. I... What? Oh, and I also didn't talk about that next to these lights that don't work, you can switch between normal performance and high performance. In high performance, the fan kicks up, but it does help get a little bit extra out of the games. Like with Smash Brothers Melee on the Dolphin emulator, you can only play it in high performance, anything less, and it really chugs, which I'm not too happy about. I do think I'm gonna stick with my Switch, I'm gonna stick with my Steam Deck. These have hit a lot more for me than this has, but... I, I do like it. It is a portable, lightweight emulation machine that can also stream games if you want to. It's just not for me. It's not something that I need or really something that I want. Which begs the question, why did I buy it? Because I thought it had cool lights. <laughs> I hope you liked the video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my Twitch streams. Check out my podcast, the Nintendo podcast. It's a whole thing. It has a whole channel. It's been a ton of fun. Episode 3 comes out soon. I don't know.